Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'll start by asking, what's new to you, Alex? Okay, so <laughs> we, we were going to talk about this before we started recording, but I was like, let's save it. More content. <laughs> um, um, so uh, today I went to Portland with my friend, Catherine, and we went to Pip's Donuts. I don't know that one. It's called Pips. They're like little mini donuts, and they mm. have a bunch of fun flavors, it's like the maple make or maple maple <laughs> maple bacon. <laughs> uh, that's that's what I'm gonna call them now. Maple bacon. bacon. <laughs> um, that's what they called the ba- in their tiny. <laughs> yes, she got the maple bacon once, <laughs> and they were delicious. Um, and mm. I got, um, I think they were like uh, salt. Brown sugar, honey, and Nutella. Oh Jesus, <laughs> that's amazing. And they were, they were very good. Honestly, the best part was like the donut itself without all the flavoring because it was just so perfect. Oh man, H- have you ever um, gotten the little donuts that they sell at the um, Vancouver Farmers Market? I don't think I have. <sighs> yeah, there's a little stand. Um, they've got this fun little teeny donut machine that you can like watch uh-huh. go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're so, they only have like a handful of flavors, but the cinnamon sugar ones are amazing. And they're just like fresh right off the little yeah. oh, dealy. So oh. And they Donuts have a bunch of like great. coffee and tea. And I got a, um, it was like a smoky vanilla, um, marshmallow chai tea. Oh my God. What? I'm <laughs> dying over here. That's not, that sounds so good. Well, the the problem that I came, uh, that I ran into was that the donuts were so sweet that the tea didn't taste sweet. Oh yeah, I get that. Like, you, I wouldn't want to drink like a special drink with a dessert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I like a nice cup of like English breakfast with milk on the yeah. side with and like, it wasn't, with, and with it, something like that. It wasn't like a um, one of those drinks where like it's a bunch of vanilla syrup or anything either. It was like sort of infused. Mm-hmm. So it was very subtle. It was very subtle, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so that's that didn't a shame. help. <laughs> but it was still yeah. very, very delicious. And they do like punch cards. So my friend, oh. she got like 12, 12 free. She got like a dozen free with her punch card. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I recommend that's them. So, uh... I don't know exactly where they are. Just look it up. I think it's Pips. They were very good. Pips. Very I'll cute remember little that place next too. time I'm very in town. Very cute little place. Um, well, Portland's it's, full of those. It's very, uh, it's over uh, east, East Portland. Okay. Northeast, northeast. East Portland. Northeast. Northeast. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then also I've been doing a lot of painting lately. Yeah, I saw your new, pretty, pretty painting. Me. Yeah, so that one was um, like a little art classy thingy mm-hmm. at, at Craft Warehouse of all places. Yeah, that's so cool. I didn't realize they did stuff like that. I'm like, I mean, it makes sense because it was like a $5 class. You got, um, they supplied the materials and the canvas. You you did that for $5? $5. And now I have the knowledge it's of how to beautiful. do it. beautiful. Yeah. Well, and it's smart because for $5, they get you in there. They get other people in the store watching you. They get involved. And then they're like, oh, here are all the supplies. <laughs> yeah, and then you'll be like, I want to do this again on my own, and then oh, you'll buy the sure. stuff there. I bought a ton of stuff. I mainly bought the paint from them, the acrylic paint, and then I went to like mm-hmm. uh, Target and then a hardware store for the other sort of weird mediums you need for that style that I was doing. But I've also <laughs> been doing, and I've also been doing some other painting besides that sort of pore painting, um, mm-hmm. and that has been sort of, I don't know. I'm really into shout out. Uh, Museum of Modern Art's YouTube page, like, obsessed. Oh. So. I've never checked that out. Oh, it's, like, they show you a ton of the exhibits. They don't, like, go through every single piece, but they, like, give you an overview of the artist. And then they also have a bunch of, like, um, teaching, like, videos where they, like, show you how to paint, like, a certain artist. Wow. What a cool way to like teach people about art, like to show them like how it's done. And so you have a better appreciation for the 
the art of it. That's uh, that's awesome. Well, especially because the ones that he, the the guy. Okay, first of all, I'm obsessed with him. Um, he has the most <laughs> amazing voice, um, and he's also kind of like attractive, at least in my opinion. Um, so I <laughs> just helps. I just love to watch him and, and listen to him. Um, but he it, his his sort of focus is abstract expressionism, which is like so above most people or like not above but like over people's heads mm. so it's just like really cool to see like him explain oh this is an all black painting but if you look at it it's really not an all black painting yeah so yeah that's cool it's been inspiring what have you been up to uh well uh just this past weekend it's it's monday uh, as we're recording i went and saw i managed to catch uh blade runner 2049 um it's still showing in salem it was like the only theater i could find in the area that Mm -hmm. was playing it Um, i guess salem's probably not very far for you no it's not it's actually closer than portland um (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh and oh my god, it was incredible. It was so good. Like, I'm a really, I'm a big fan. Well, okay. I have mixed feelings on the original Blade Runner. I think it's an incredible uh-huh. piece of cinema. Really beautiful, really fascinating, really thought provoking. There are parts of it that I don't like, but. <laughs> uh, honestly, the- that's exactly how I feel about the sequel. About 2049? Yeah, is it's an amazing piece of cinema, beautiful. There are parts that I love, but there are parts that are just like, eh. Well, what, I mean, the thing, that, what I'm really referring to is is the um, sexual assault framed oh. as a romantic evening. Yeah, that's... That that's <laughs> it's Harrison joke, yeah. Ford's trademark. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really, I mean, I thought that 2049 was like a really big downer. Like a super downer, but um, but I thought it was just gorgeous. Oh, it's stunning, and like the you can so so totally see the director's style there. Uh, for anyone who didn't yeah. know, he didn't he direct um, Arrival? Yes, I think so. Yeah, um, and that sort of like the sweeping, those like panning huge shots above the city and just like oh mm-hmm. and the music yeah i mean i will say this of it it was definitely a worthy successor For to sure. the blade runner um and franchise i think we talked about it maybe before but i mean obviously there are some low points um mm-hmm. like again the, the sexual assault comes up with jared leto's character um yeah but that's... he's a villain so like I, that's, well, that's he's true being, but it's also I mean, like a lot of people just didn't really enjoy how the movie portrayed women or like, yeah, I, I I mean, I'm not the person to yeah. explain it very well. I, I'm just sort of trying to relay. No, I mean, I can get that there being a criticism there because there weren't really any female characters that were like real people. And that's a funny <laughs> thing to say about something like Blade yes. Runner. Uh-huh. But I think you get what I mean. Like the characters didn't feel like people. I mean, I guess the the like um, sex worker uh replicant i i mean she had very little screen time i loved her but though. she felt like yeah she felt like a really interesting and authentic character um mostly everybody else i mean you know we had fantasy girl uh, yeah. joy and and terminator love uh <laughs> and that was about it um fake rachel but yeah, I mean it was a it was a male story for sure. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I guess that's just in the tradition of Blade Runner. How'd you feel about the last act? Um, what I mean, what specifically? Like the um, the everything after that final comfort. Com- well, basically everything after you, Harrison Ford shows up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't know. Like, I guess I didn't feel differently about it than i felt about the rest of the movie is there something specific that you're getting at about that um i don't know i didn't really like the um sort of i don't know the tone was there was this definite shift in tone it was less mystery Mm -hmm. and then it was like sort of like it was like mystery and then it was like suddenly revolution but then like he's not the revolutionary even though we kind of wanted him to be and we were led i don't know it felt very manipulative Mm mm-hmm well, and not I mean, in like a fun, interesting, good way. 
I get feeling that way. I didn't, though. I mean, because I felt like the whole movie was just sort of okay. a, like, what's going on? Is this happening? Like, I, I never felt like I could assume anything. Yeah. So even, you know, when things happened that I didn't necessarily expect, I was like, well, there it goes. Like, yep, I couldn't, I, through the, the whole movie I was guessing. And so I didn't mind feeling, because it, it didn't feel unearned. Yeah. It just felt like, oh man, they managed to get that one by me. Um, so that, I mean, I didn't, I didn't necessarily have that experience of it. Um, the soundtrack was, of course, just banging it was so good <laughs> well it's funny because so wasn't it was it on our last episode that you were talking about the yeah the thor soundtrack and i'm like the thor soundtrack compared yeah, to and i was com- tweeting about compared, that the other compared day. to the, the the blade runner soundtrack is nothing like that blade runner soundtrack is like a so i mean it's like so nostalgic well it's it's i mean it's really evocative of the first film it's just like that but then also like turned to up turned up to 11 yeah. No, I really enjoyed it. I, like I told you last time, I just really am into like old school synth stuff. So like, even though it was, it's, it's in a different sort of direction than the Thor soundtrack. I loved it for the same reasons. Oh yeah. It's, it's, um, that's probably my favorite part of the whole film was the soundtrack, but then I also enjoyed many other aspects of it. Well, yeah, this is like, I gotta tell you, I'm not the biggest fan of, of um ryan gosling i find him fairly boring a lot of the Uh time but i felt like in this case that was like really maybe appropriate and effective like he's standard boy he was just your run-of-the-mill average model boy well and you (laughs) could you could sort of see it as like oh he wasn't going all the way there acting wise but then if you think about it he's a replicant who's been turned down like his basically his uh, options have been turned off yeah, I was a little iffy about his casting when, like, I'd seen the trailers and stuff, but in the film, I was like, oh, yeah, no, this is right. Like, this is who this character is. He's just a regular boy. So, yeah. I, <laughs> so I the only The me. only performance I didn't like was Harrison's, and it's because he's basically playing himself in every role now at this point. Well, yeah, and now he's old and tired and kind of phones it in. Yeah, and like... he, he didn't even dress like he was from <laughs> the same world. It was really weird. I know. He's he in a t-shirt and t-shirt. jeans. I'm like... You're living in, like, wasteland Las Vegas. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Put on some sequins, for God's sake. But I will say, the the actual villain of the movie, she was phenomenal. Oh, you mean love? Yes, like... The Terminator girl? Yes, she wasn't, like, the main evil. Like, she was complicated, but she was in it more. And she was just so good. She really was, you know. She she played a lot of different roles uh-huh. in that movie, mm-hmm. and and it all worked. And it never felt like, oh, you're just being someone else. Like it all it made sense. Yeah. But she had a lot of really different sides to her. Yeah. Now I want to see. No, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Well, it it'll be out on video, I'm sure, by Christmas. Like, oh, for sure. For I don't sure. know. Maybe not by. Well, I would think it's weird. It's it's actually that's pretty that's a pretty quick turnaround, but it would be kind of a mistake for them not to have it out for Christmas. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just now we're gonna just start I mean, talking about it's... Star Wars because now I'm excited for Star Wars all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? There's a lot of good stuff coming out. We got a uh, Black Panther on the way. Oh, we got so cool. Deadpool two on the horizon. Is that um, going to be in the beginning of the year again, like the first one was? I don't know when it's coming out. Yeah, because the first one much. came out on Valentine's Day. We haven't seen much of that. Yeah, I, I was kind of expecting next summer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're probably pushing it forward to the hot movie spot because they're like, oh. The su- big summer movie. <laughs> well, yeah, because the first one, they're like, oh, it can be good and successful. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a gamble. So they put it in that weird, like early year slump sort well, of Well, that's time. what they did with um, but now. Logan, too, and Logan was screaming good. Yeah, well, they just, they're, they've they been scared to yeah. take those chances, and they've those been were very the good two chances, R-rated and they really too. paid off. Yeah, those were the two R-rated Yeah, ones. and it was, it, was a, it was a leap that they made, but it was absolutely good. Um, oh, okay. and have you seen the trailer for Rampage? What's that? Okay. My man, are you familiar with the 1987 video game Rampage? Yes. 
Where they destroy the buildings? Yeah. Yeah. Those monsters, right? The rock. Yeah, the rock is in this movie. <laughs> it's a it's a movie adaptation of the 1987 video game Rampage, <laughs> starring Dwayne the Rock Johnson as a man who has something to do with it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't. And it's insane. And guess when the release date is? I have no idea what. Four. Four twenty. Four twenty. Four twenty. <laughs> 420. <laughs> It oh looks absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's and it's because it's coming out in April and they've just put out trailers for like there was no news on this movie until yeah. now. It is it is November. The movie is coming out in <laughs> April and we have heard nothing. This is insane. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, one quick thing while we're talking about movies coming up. So I started watching a mm-hmm. playthrough of uh, the storyline of Battlefront 2. Oh. A, the graphics are insanely gorgeous. <laughs> um, also, the storyline is, like, super interesting. And apparently, it, like, yeah. follows along with the, the new lore books. And I'm just, like... Luckily, the play, the people playing through are, like, explaining all of the, the books to me. And I'm, like, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. That's nice. Right? Um, so, I'm just really excited for that. I wasn't super excited... Um, for a little bit, but I mean, Star Wars, how can you not be excited? Oh, now I'm super excited. I am here for the Finn and Captain Phasma fight that needs to happen. <gasps> I'm just here for Poe. <laughs> Everybody is. In- yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I'm really excited. Really excited I have, for I have, Mark Hamill. Oh, I have a weird feeling and a weird, like, random, unbased theory. Um, uh-huh. So I know that we're all, like, begging for poe to be queer um yes and they better but i have a feeling they're gonna make the new girl queer hmm yeah which i mean (laughs) why can't they both be queer nobody nobody's excited about that because we don't know anything about her yet yeah we can't well yeah because i remember way 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 back when these movies were just a glimmer in somebody's eye, in Disney's eye, uh, and, like, J.J. Abrams was first, like, signed on to do them, and he said that there was going to be a prominent queer character. I, and he's he's and on board for the, for the last movie, so he better, you know. Yeah, I'm, well, yeah, it was a I'm little, like, be, when the first one happened, I was peeved. like... Yeah. Anyway, so we can peeved. we can talk about we'll talk about that <laughs> till the cows come home. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think it's time to get on to our topic for the day, which we had a little bit of confusion as to what it was going to be. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, why don't you introduce us? Since it was sort of your okay. um, thing. So I was looking for a video game to play, and I was. A little bit interested in uh, Middle Earth Shadows of War or Shadow of War, not plural, I guess. Um, and yeah. I, I oddly never played the first one, uh, Shadows of Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> but it was but good. It's just like I love the whole like building an army, and I don't know. I would say that I've really enjoyed my casual experience with the um, Tolkien universe. I've never read any of the books. Yeah. Um, I have seen the extended films, um, not always uh, of my own free will, (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I do enjoy a lot of it, Uh, mostly, and I'm so bad with the names, Um, I mean, she's my favorite actress because she was just in Thor, help. (laughs) Oh, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett, Um, her character is my favorite character. Galadriel is, is wonderful. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I thought we could maybe yeah, so dabble we're... a little bit, even though I'm, like, so uneducated in the whole world. Well, but, like, that's, I think it's it's interesting to talk sort of about how the Tolkien brand has sort of proliferated, you know? Yeah. Because, Where... mm-hmm. yeah, no, Shadow of War is a great game. It's super duper rad. Um, lots of fun. And, well, the thing that I find really interesting about it is the way that it is sort of an extra 
textual story. You know, it's it doesn't it doesn't cover any plot that Tolkien ever wrote. Yeah. Um, my understanding is that those games, it's a little f- f- fuzzy, um, but I believe that they take place during the time that the ring is in the Shire. Mm-hmm. Um, so after, um, after the Hobbit, but before the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, and yeah, you're playing as um, Talion, a Gondorian ranger who, I guess, died and then got like haunted <laughs> um, <laughs> by um the ghost of Celebrimbor who is a Tolkien character um yeah. he was the elf who forged the rings for Sauron back when he was um supposedly a nice boy back when <laughs> he was like i'm just a nice boy and i'm gonna make rings for everyone kill a brimbor can you help <laughs> uh, and he did and he made the rings um <laughs> and then you know died <laughs> eventually and haunted talion uh and so they're like this fun duo uh in one body fighting the forces of Mordor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I do find it really interesting that they decided to take this character who was, you know, maybe a, a footnote in the Silmarillion, and they're like, how about he got to do stuff after he died? Well, and they, they chose, a. I think they chose really wisely because, like, he's the ringmaker. Like, that's uh, Yeah, intense. he was there. He, 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 like, these rings are so, like, basically unlimited power, but... Mm-hmm. Like the the power had to be created, so it's like I don't know. I think it's a really, especially the the direction this is the game's going. I haven't finished it. I'm pretty fairly aware of what's going to happen, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's very much like the uh, uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, that's how that's Lord of the Rings for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what those rings do. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then, you know, I, I'm trying to think if there are many other um, pieces of media that are, you know, that take place within Middle-earth but don't cover the plots that Tolkien wrote. Because this is certainly the most prominent example I can think of. But do yeah, you know of anything well, else know, that's I, out there? I don't that... know of any examples, but it makes me think of um, the, the Wizard of Oz. How... Um, that sort of location, anybody can write about it because the rights don't belong to anybody anymore. Yeah, well, and I think that that was sort of Tolkien's vision in the first place. I remember reading some kind of quote about how he had imagined, you know, being able to write uh, the, you know, this this place and this lore that could be expanded upon and stories could be set within it, um, and that you know it would continue to sort of live and breathe. Uh, beyond what he created mm-hmm. um and well, clearly that's yeah. happened mm-hmm. like <laughs> you know he his middle earth is alive and well which is so crazy because it's been hun- like, but, not but, hundreds of years but it's been a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's 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 been a you know a little under a century yeah. since he wrote the hobbit because what he wrote the hobbit in like the 50s is it i thought it was 60s? even further i, thought, I don't even I know think... when the hobbit was written I think it was even longer ago for some reason. I might be wrong. I'm probably yeah. wrong. Uh, 37. <laughs> 37? My yeah. God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little while. So, yeah, uh, under a century, but, you know. Still 80 years. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a long time ago. Um, and, of course, you know, then you know years later he he you know continued to write the story with the lord of the rings trilogy and all of that um and then eventually his son i believe is the one who actually published the silmarillion which is basically just a compilation of the notes and lore that Mm -hmm. tolkien wrote um but didn't necessarily intend for publication um which is so funny because, yeah, that's what um, Peter Jackson had wanted to make when he made The Hobbit. He wanted to do the Silmarillion and, like, make it a story sort of focusing on Gandalf yeah. as the hero. Mm-hmm. And then 
Ian McKellen was like, Peter, I'm far too old. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> so, so well, and then, well, yeah, it, it, and I then think everyone should, was like, nobody wants that, Peter Jackson. Yeah, we should definitely talk about The Hobbit for a while because I think it's probably the biggest piece of this world for a lot of people. So um, I think my first experience with Middle Earth was the animated Hobbit movie. That was Ralph Bakshi, right? I don't know. I just remember it, and it was awesome. <laughs> I want to look, because I, I love Bakshi, and I'm pretty sure that is. Probably. I mean, you, um, but I mean, that movie is so, like, not great for kids, but it's a kid's movie, and it's a kid's book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it is not... Bakshi. He did the Lord of the Rings though, didn't he? I don't I don't know if I did I if I saw those ones. There's there's so many. So yeah, Wikipedia the Hobbit. Not, <laughs> yeah, 1977. Um animated I didn't realize it was a television special. Oh, I think I had um, it on like VHS. Well, oh, yeah. We probably I mean, recorded it you from weren't TV. around we in 1977. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was released on video, but I guess it was made for TV. Um, oh, the studio was a precursor to Ghibli. That's fun. <laughs> oh, so it was it the same studio that made The Last Unicorn? Because I know that was be. a precursor to Ghibli. I think they do. I think they are. And they definitely have the same sort of style, too. Yeah, I love that cartoon, by the way. Last Unicorn is so good. Oh, yeah. it's Everybody loves that one. It's so weird and awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so this, this is why I was confused. Um, so the the seventy eight Lord of the Rings cartoon was Ralph Bakshi. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if I ever saw those. I must. I don't know. I haven't in a really long time. Um, but uh, honestly, it's perfect material for Bakshi to have adapted. That's a hundred percent. Like he made <laughs> stuff that was basically just like, like he he made this. Um, film uh fire and ice i think it's either called fire and ice or ice and fire it's frankly it's not very good Uh, (laughs) (laughs) but it's a fascinating artifact of sort of the a time before people decided cartoons were only for kids oh wow cool yeah no it's pretty adult um you know it's sort of you know back she was sort of the last like he he was the last push for like adult aimed animation, mm-hmm. and uh, which is funny that he did Lord of the Rings. I suppose it sort of bridges the gap between adults and children, but yeah, his he just didn't. He made the movie Wizards, which was sort of his like big thing, and it just kind of tanked. And so that was when everyone was like, maybe cartoons are just for kids, which is nonsense. But that's the world we live in. <laughs> well and it's like if they were just for kids why yeah. would they keep making adult jokes in kids movies you know well i mean but the thing is they started making adult jokes in kids movies uh, like yeah, think about cartoons that came out you know after the 70s like but before like 2000 yeah yeah <laughs> like bambi honestly like cartoons kind of got <laughs> terrible around that time that was like oh, the yeah. disney dark ages mm-hmm. and stuff so things were weird for cartoons in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, the those cartoons are sort of the most notable um, sort of earlier adaptations, I think, of of Tolkien's work. There was there was some other stuff, but just not terribly good or successful. Yeah, I think those were probably like the big big thing, you know. Yeah, I I mean that that you know things that it, until that until you read the Hobbit in lasting popularity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it is interesting that um, I mean I guess I guess it was just sort of a, a, a based on limitation. Why before Peter Jackson, a real like big attempt at the Lord of the Rings hadn't been made. I mean like especially outside of animation like i guess it just felt like too too difficult to pull off and at the time that jackson did it it was just becoming realistic to do something like that you know cg was getting to the point where we could pull it off i think that the 
Oh, yeah. The, I think the first movie that sort of showed that maybe it could have been possible would be, like, Jurassic Park. Yeah, you know, that's fair. Um, gosh, what a good movie. But that was still way early before. Yeah, that was, like, the first sort of know. baby steps into really um, intense use yeah. of CG. And honestly, there's only about 12 minutes of it total in that movie, which is crazy. Well, and and that's the crazy thing about The Lord of the Rings is it's not, like, it is very CG heavy and CG reliant, but, like, there is so much practical shit in that movie. Yeah. In those movies. Yeah, those three, and then The Hobbit came around. (laughs) So, I'm... Which we don't have to, I mean, we need to talk about The Hobbit, but, like, let's not talk about The Hobbit. Yeah. Well, I gotta, my, (laughs) the piece I want to say about The Hobbit movies is I get it. I get I believe oh, yeah. mm-hmm. that they're flawed for sure. Like, um, I don't have a great defense for them, but I just, I just like them anyway. Like, I don't like. They, I, there's stuff that I would change about them, absolutely, but I still really enjoyed them. I liked the first two quite a lot. The third one <laughs> ha- was tonally very difficult to swallow. It didn't quite know what it was doing uh <laughs> and i i totally know why because i watched like a behind the scenes and it was like the whole cast and crew, or not cast but the crew and the production were like telling the issue that happened and it was basically like you know peter didn't want to make that movie that he had to make he wanted and to make the film earlier guillermo, yeah and guillermo he had to like pick up where guillermo left off because guillermo left the project yeah which, oh, can man. you imagine what, the hobbit with guillermo as the lead like what a stunning Ugh. movie that would have been. Uh, and he's, like, been involved the whole way. Like, you can see his fingerprints all over the tri- the first trilogy, or the the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the movies. Yeah, like, for sure. Um, I think my favorite visual um, fingerprint of his is the, the mouth of Sauron in the extended cut. Oh, gosh, yeah. That is totally one of his monsters. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're right it is yeah i just like watching that scene over and over because I love, I love it yeah but i mean and, and like you can see it coming through sort of jackson's dissatisfaction with the project that he ended up i mean he was making the hobbit like uh, via the silver like it was there was so much silmarillion yeah. in it he was like we got he was just doing everything he could to make a different movie than the movie he was making and, and, and it, honestly it i don't think the silmarillion stuff was, was the issue the silmarillion stuff was intensely well, no. interesting too i thought but there was sort of a, a dissonance i felt like a struggle going on between like two movies happening simultaneously oh, sure. <laughs> like yeah. the issue was that he, he he wasn't able to just go for it and make what he really wanted to yeah. and so he mm-hmm. was it just felt like you know some of the stuff was just sort of like an afterthought you know it's like and then we do mm-hmm. this stuff and there's that and they're oh and then they're fighting the goblins okay like that goblin the goblin town scene sucks <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad fight scene it nothing matters it's really actually there's this great video that i watched it was actually a series <laughs> of videos on youtube that i watched it's like a five-part series on why the hobbit movies suck Mm -hmm. but like it's very cogent and 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 fair and entertaining as heck um and like i can watch as a fan of those movies i can watch those videos and be like you're right that was a bad idea like (laughs) that was poorly made (laughs) but he's just talking about that scene the, the goblin town um, like, I guess, escape? I don't know. Um, yeah. And how it just never, ever has any stakes because, like, just over and over, very rapidly, it's like, here's a problem. Here's uh, here's the character reacting to that problem. Here's them solving that problem. Just like, bam, 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 over and over. Stakes don't build. Yeah. Like, nothing matters. It doesn't even matter where anybody is or who's doing what. Like, it's just a bunch of nonsense happening until the scene gets over. Also, the design for, like, the Goblin <laughs> so King shame. is, like, so bad. <laughs> I hate looking at him. It's just so bad. <laughs> I hate looking at him. Yeah. Although yeah, well, I think actually, probably design... my my favorite part of those movies is I, I'm so bad again, so bad with the names. I'm bad with the actors' names. Everybody knows this. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. Um, the other wizard. 
Oh, um, Radagast. Yes, I love him. Excellent casting. He's a I cutie thought. pie. So adorable. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. So interesting too. Like, I I could. Yeah, it, it was nice know. to see it. The 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 third uh, wizard of any importance. <laughs> yeah. And so different from the other two that we've seen. Mm-hmm. Like, completely different. Yeah, the three of them are all very distinct. Yeah. Um, no, I, I hate the orcs in those movies. Oh, the stupid <laughs> white orc or whatever? Oh, yeah. What a dr- yeah, Azog. Dull character. And then Bolg Azog Jr. <laughs> He's just a clone of Azog. Well, and the thing is, it's such a shame because I saw produ- there are production photos out there of like those orcs were going to be played by human actors uh-huh. um, in costume, the way that the orcs all were in the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. And then they just didn't. And, uh, you know, budget reasons, Ugh. whatever. What budget but reasons? Did they're... you see how much makeup those dwarves had on? Yeah, I know. But, like, <laughs> these guys looked so cool and interesting because they were a really different take on orcs. Because these aren't, you know, army orcs. They're not, you know, the because the, the armies of Mordor are only just being sort of raised. Like, that's not a thing yet. Uh-huh. So these aren't, you know, plate mail orcs. These are, like, ranger yeah. orcs. And they had, like, colorful feathers. And, like, it was just really a oh, cool... cool different look that's one of the cool orcs. things about like, the, the shadows of war shadow of war and shadow of mordor is like the different uh, tribes of the orcs that you encounter and how like, i love all of the <laughs> they have, the way they do with the characters and they're all randomly generated they're all original new boys like i love that the, the one thing that gets annoying is like you see a lot of the same names used again in your playthrough and it's like they could have had more well, names, like, you know, or- a bigger name basis. Orcs aren't that original, yeah, though. That's true. <laughs> they're, they're just orcs. You can't oh expect my that fa- much of them. My favorite one that I've encountered so far, I don't remember his first name, but his title is The Knowing, or The, the One Who Knows, or something like that. Uh-huh. All he says is, Yeah. I know it. I know it. I know it. <laughs> that's all he can say. <laughs> yeah, there's one that I, <laughs> one I came across that was... Um, like what somebody one word and like he just like he stutters and then just says one thing yeah. he's like uh, 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 uh-huh. betrayal <laughs> and like <laughs> like it's great they, they do a really good job in that of like making the orc or, and honestly the the orcs and the um uh the olugs feel yeah. like characters well and they're like also real people. They all, they... It, honestly in a way that that Tolkien never did that. Like, the orcs were never people before, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Well, and, like... And I and I feel like that's a great, you know, a great way to expand. My favorite thing they did, and it's kind of... I think some people might have a different opinion on this, but I actually really like how they have, like, a huge variety of accents. A huge variety of um, accents that wouldn't fit. Yeah. And, and speech patterns that would not fit in this world normally. Yeah. Well, and they, they've definitely taken liberties. Like they have that one comedian guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I just, I just, I just uh, dominated or kept, whatever, got his, his orc with that voice. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and it, it's interesting the liberties that they've taken um, because, like, I was kind of curious. I was like, okay, so what's the deal? And, like, I was very... I was very confused about trolls in, in Middle Earth because I was like, okay, which ones can talk and yeah. which ones aren't sentient? Which ones <laughs> turn to stone? Which ones don't? Like, how? Do, who is anybody? <laughs> What's going on? Because, like, the, the cave trolls yeah. in Fellowship of the Ring, they don't seem intelligent. They seem like beasts. But then, like, the, the trolls in The Hobbit... Mountain trolls? Um, yeah, th- th- those trolls definitely, like, have yeah. intelligence. I mean, they're yeah. dumb, mm-hmm. but they have intelligence. And so I was like, okay, yeah. what? And then they turn to stone, but other ones don't? Like, what's going on? So I looked it up. <laughs> and um, so there's trolls, and then there's Ologhai, um, which are the mm-hmm. sort of Sauron trolls. And they um, do not turn to stone. Um, I don't recall if it said anything about, like, differing intelligences. Um, but the interesting thing um, was that uh, the article said that Ologhai only speak black speech. They don't speak the common tongue. Um, which is funny because, uh-huh. like, Bruce says, like, he doesn't sp- speak black speech at yeah. all. And so it's like, wait, but like, you should only speak black speech. Which, which is also funny. I think Bruce is a really good example of um, 
So I think a little later in the storyline, Celebrimbor is like, you know, keep an eye out on Bruce because he's really smart. Um, uh-huh. Especially, and, and you sort of notice that as you meet other Ologs. Like, they're big and they're not dumb, but they're not quite as quick. Yeah, he's, as, he's um, especially sharp. He's definitely a clever oh, yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Clever and then also very well spoken. Um, funny, too. <laughs> I love him. Uh, I think so far, oddly, my favorite character is Karnan. Remind me. Is that her name? Oh, the, she's like, the, the knife spirit. of Galadriel. Oh, wait. Who? Yeah, she's like the, this elemental goddess or something. Right. Oh, right. Her, the, the tree lady. Yes. Fascinating. Yes. Oh, I, like her accent is so incredible to listen to. I agree. Like, I don't, I don't know. I can't exactly place it, but like, oh, it's stunning. Yeah, yeah really so, interesting, oh. unique. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but I mean... That's the interesting thing about about those games is the way that it sort of takes what it needs from Tolkien's writing and then, you know, does its own thing with it. Because, oh, yeah, yeah, they're and like, think... it, this is better if they don't all just speak black speech. Like, this is, <laughs> we can't tell as good of a story <laughs> if that's the case. Yeah, and then you know, it's less funny, too, because if they're telling a joke, it's in subtitles and, yeah, you know. <laughs> it's just harder um, to deal with. Also, in terms of, like, taking liberties, I think the biggest uh, sort of headline was the whole Shelob debate. Oh, or not, yeah. Not necessarily debate, but, you know, yeah. The, um, the so far, in Shilob playing issue. it, I I get it. I get why they chose it. I, they, they probably could have picked a different character that would have made just as much sense. But I think they wanted somebody who... Somebody recognizable. Recognizable, but also, like, dark and twisted, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, I get that. I get the choice to, to use her in that in that function, in that capacity. I don't necessarily agree with the choice they chose for, like, uh, model and uh, costume. Because I think it's not a Yeah, I'm not, not sure why she loves a real sexy lady. In, like, flowing black <laughs> robes. Um, like, I, 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 or I sort of see but it as, like... she looks like Elvira. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I sort of see it as, like, her trying to uh, break through uh, Talion's sort of wall a little bit and manipulate him more so, with like, her Like, sort form. of be appealing? Yeah, sort of like in like, um, uh, oh, that terrible movie they did of that old poem. I'm so bad at things. Oh, my God, you're talking about Beowulf. Yes, Angelina Jolie and Beowulf. Yeah. Kind of like that. I think that we're going to have to do an episode talking about Beowulf. I have thoughts. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> See, I'm not very good on Beowulf, but maybe maybe you can find... Uh, well, just that uh, movie in, in particular. Know, a, a guest. Yeah, no, that just that movie. I, I would specific. gladly watch it again to discuss yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I would gladly we'll, watch we'll it again put to that, discuss it. We'll put that it, on the I list because I have so many thoughts on that and just Zemeckis in general. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> But yeah, I think I, I sort of get where they're coming from with the she love decision, but I also like they could have made her like a crazy spider lady. Like she could have been so many you, things. You could have given her a, a sort of right, and she looks really cool when she's a giant spider. Uh huh. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And and as you go through like finding her her like lost memories, like you sort of start to see this thing where like maybe she was in love or, or in a relationship with. Sauron and I'm like ugh yeah you know like have her be in love with Karnan or something cool I don't know any yeah (laughs) it's weird yeah it's weird it's weird also like like pre pre armor Sauron is like stupid looking (laughs) he looks like he looks like the Keebler elf for for serious like seriously it's just like yeah he's so like bright and beautiful I bet but that is I mean that is I guess. Accurate. Um, when yeah. he was... Oh God, what just, was the name that he was going by at that... I can't remember the name that he was going know. by at that time. But, like, he shows up and he's like, I'm the gift boy. Everybody love me. And they're like, we do. Like, he was a friend <laughs> and, a, and a lovely boy. Like, they they liked him. He seemed nice and friendly. Um, So, like, he's supposed to look totally unthreatening. I, I there's, there's one thing I wanted to bring up quickly um yeah and it was so i've been toying with idea of like 
how can we bring poetry into video games? Mm -hmm. Because I think it's a really tough question and a tough puzzle. Mm -hmm. But oddly, they've done a really good job in this game, in my opinion. The, like, poem puzzles? Yeah. So, for anybody who doesn't know, you basically have to hunt around each area looking for uh, elvish words. Um, and then once you've collected them all, you go to this little, the special magical door, like in the Fellowship of the Ring, uh, like the door by the, the big sea monster thingy, uh, into the mines of Moria. <laughs> and Moria. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you you give, you, you get this poem that's missing a bunch of words and you have the words at the top and you have to sort of fill in the blanks. And fill it's kind of blanks. like, yeah. And it's like, uh, it, on paper, it's really easy, but like, I got stuck on one for so long. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's really like challenging as a puzzle and also really it sort of starts to um I don't know I'm all about making poetry less scary and it's really it really does that like it helps you sort of figure out like oh I think this would sound good here so that must be where it goes um uh, and then after you're done figuring out a Celebrimbor reads it and then you get rewarded so it's like oh cool poetry gives me prizes legendary gear <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think that it really is um, very in the spirit of Tolkien. Oh, for you know? sure. I mean, yeah. Those books, like, you said you didn't read them. I read The Fellowship of the Ring. I, and, I got about halfway yeah, through The Fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> I, I managed to read the whole thing. I want to revisit them. I read that in middle school, and I was like, okay, well, I read that one. I think I'm good now. But I would <laughs> like to revisit them, give it another shot um it wasn't necessarily the thing for me then but it might be now uh but yeah like you know i mean there's there is plenty of of song and and rhyme in those books like it's everywhere because tolkien was just like a you know a literary fiend he was a, you know a mythology boy and he <laughs> he he was just really really into words a lot so well and the cool thing about the appropriate the poems in the game is I don't think they can't all be original to the books because some of them are about. Well, I guess Celebrimbor was in the uh, Cimmerillion, but like, there's a lot about him, um, and so I'm like, well, they 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 tried some new because because not all the poems are the same style of poem that J.R. would have been writing, you know. So it's really cool to see yeah. them come up. Yeah, with, I'm like, sure that bring, they were bring that sort of more fresh style. I don't know. I really enjoyed it so far. Even though I've only solved, like, three or four yeah, of them. Yeah, <laughs> it was definitely a a different kind of puzzle, you know. I mean, games like that always have some little mini-game puzzles that you have to do along the way, and I thought that that was a, a fun, sort of fresh one. That definitely don't see that in a lot of games. Yeah. Um... Um, <clears throat> so I, I had a, I had a thought, um, okay. because yeah, I do feel like all of this sort of like, uh, experimentation and expansion and, you know, all of this stuff that's going on in Middle Earth, I think it's all really appropriate and, and cool and in the spirit of what Tolkien was doing. I think that he would appreciate it. Um, but in contrast, I, I, I was, um watching this video about the Cthulhu mythos uh -huh. and how it's pretty antithetical to Lovecraft's work. Uh -huh. um, so the, um, the what we think of, what we regard as the Cthulhu mythos was uh, mostly invented by a friend who sort of championed and carried on his work after his untimely death. Um, the guy August Derleth, I believe, is how you say it. Um, I believe he was like a publisher of his and a friend. And after Lovecraft died, he sort of carried on writing these stories within this universe and sort of began categorizing and sort of like giving giving sort of a, a pantheon and a structure to the whole thing um and he's actually received a lot of criticism for doing this because um he he turned it sort of into a, something that it's not because you know talk, or lovecraft's whole thing was that it uh you know we can't know anything <laughs> like it's uh, you know unknowable yeah. knowledge it's beyond <laughs> us we're insignificant and we can't possibly grasp the the enormity and the you know, expansiveness of the universe. 
And then Derelith comes along and he's like, and this is Cthulhu and this is his brother and they come from here and they're <laughs> mad at, at each other and then this is their mom. And like, it's it's just like, that's not really how it was supposed to be. Like, it's supposed to be beyond us, uh-huh. but he's just like imposing this sort of rigid and traditional like pantheon structure onto it. And so, so it's essentially, like, there's so much, mm-hmm. you know, media out there that we only have because of Derelith's work. Like, Tolkien probably, or not Tolkien, I keep saying Tolkien. Yeah. Uh, Lovecraft probably would have been forgotten. Like, he was not successful in his day. Like, he was destitute when he died. Um, so, like, all of this mm-hmm. stuff that we have um, based upon his work wouldn't be here without Derelith's contribution. But at the same time, it's like, this stuff all seems maybe a little, like, disrespectful to Lovecraft's work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what maybe, maybe what would a version of that for Middle Earth be? Like, what, what, what kind of genre could somebody write in this world that would really disrespect... <laughs> Tolkien. I, I don't know. I mean, if there's anything going on in the Middle Earth stuff that would not, that kind of runs contrary to what Tolkien was writing, it's, you know, maybe for the better because a lot of his stuff was really sort of classist and racist. And so, like, the fact that uh-huh. we're sort of moving away from that within his universe, like, that's not what he was writing, but that's okay. Like, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. lots of <laughs> lots of squeaky stuff in Tolkien. Like, he was an old British man in the you know first half of the 20th century like he had some sort of worldviews that don't necessarily have a place in our time yeah so Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know but you know love lovecraft was a xenophobe as well so what can you do (laughs) yeah now I'm just imagining like um I don't know my brain is so I'm so annoyed at myself um (laughs) We did an episode about Inglorious Bastards, directed by Tarantino. Thank you. Imagine a Tarantino more or uh, Middle Earth movie. <laughs> oh. I feel like that that would definitely shame. <laughs> yeah, I get <laughs> Tolkien's yeah. grave. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's an interesting thought because you know it, there is sort of the question of how pro war. Um, Tolkien was yeah Um, Mm because it sort of seems like he's got you know this idea that like war maybe isn't ideal but must be undertaken in the right circumstances Mm -hmm. you know and and you know living through world war ii i definitely can understand that perspective of like sometimes there are things which we must fight for um so yeah like, he doesn't really glorify violence, but he certainly doesn't condemn it. Yeah. I mean, he's just very racist. So. <laughs> he's just very um, racist. Do we have anything else we really want to bring up? Like, I know there's, I don't know, I thought about something maybe like parallel, because like you have the Dark Lord, and that's sort of like, because you brought up World War II, thinking like, you know, worlds where we have this, ultimate evil and i feel like our world is kind of like that these days but it's also like there's just so much general evil out there um (laughs) yeah well yeah i mean and it is a very uh sort of world war ii perspective on war um with you know the idea it's like no the bad the enemy is just wrong is just evil and we have to do whatever it takes to defeat them because they're going to take over the world and that's definitely bad. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's, that's you know, I guess if Sauron is, is Hitler, then that's fair. Um, most conflicts on planet Earth don't occur that way, though. Well, and um, I think Shadow of War complicates it a little bit by making these people that you're either supposed to be you know, turning on your side or killing, making them likable. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, the, the, especially, you know, your sidekick characters <clears throat> like Bruce or Ratbag, you know, they can be very endearing. And, 
so the idea is like but so like how many guys like this are yeah. there out there and i believe that you know sort of part of what ends up being the case you know in the later story during you know the lord of the rings during the big war um you know it's supposed to be you know especially like with the uruk high like these are evil beings specifically created by sauron and so it's just like oh no they're just definitely evil like orcs and trolls like there's you know they're not nice but they're sort of still naturally occurring creatures whereas like the urukai mm-hmm. and the olokai are like new things i don't know but then like bruise is an olokai so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know well and, and then we also get into the like there's i, I Calibre more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I don't didn't play the first game, so I don't know too much of how he was in that one. But he's like definitely not a good. He's guy. a total asshole at like, very least. Like, yeah, he's he's he is. he's 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 a bit squeaky at times. Like, he's he's definitely up there in sort of megalomaniac terms. Yeah, and he's like, I could listen to him talk all day, but. Like, you can see he's totally using Talion. Totally. He's a total rude boy. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> he sucks. Yeah, no, he's he's just so sassy. Ugh. But he's so damn powerful. Oh my god, I feel so cool. Yeah. Oh, I know. You can you can do some really, really rad stuff. Oh, like, I, okay. I love it. So my favorite thing currently is where you can do the... the, the sh- where, okay, so you aim your bow... And then you teleport over to a guy and then you kill him. But yeah. then then you can chain that as long as you have focus. Yeah. So then you can like shoot yourself into the middle of a crowd and they don't know you're there. And then you kill the guy you shoot at and then you send a ghost over to kill the guy next to him. And then the guy next to him. And then the guy next to him. And then like half of them are dead already and they haven't even seen you. Yeah, you feel like a total boss. Like it's really fun. Uh, it's so cool. Yeah, no, it's really, really And I fun. know that later in the game you get you dabble in necromancy a little bit, so I'm really <laughs> excited about that. Because that's like, every RPG that has necromancer as an option, I will play a necromancer. <laughs> so I am all for it. Yeah, it's a it's a good time. It's a, definitely a good time. But yeah, I guess, because you were asking, like, what is sort of disrespectful? respectful or you know antithetical to Tolkien's writing and yeah I I mean and I think that in the case of Tolkien it is just sort of maybe for the better like this is you know he was writing from a certain perspective and that perspective isn't really um necessary or useful now and and is in fact in fact kind of harmful and we prefer narratives with shades of gray in them yeah, and I'm, I'm sort of noticing some other storytelling that I feel is a little outdated for me. It's probably right on par for where, like, the gaming industry is. Um, but, like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the, our, this podcast, the alternate title would be called, like, Queer It Up. We want it queerer. Like, <laughs> I want to date Yeah. Baranor, I think his name is. And, <laughs> and I want the elf lady to date the the human lady like duh yeah that's adorable <laughs> you know what though at least they like put people of color in it like well, that's a step um yeah they, they, Tolkien for sure. they put um baronor and i love him he, he they the, the voice actor is really great too i really love his voice acting he's very good yeah yeah i noticed he was he was really good and he's just a sweetie also he's a good boy um karen or, did I, I said it earlier but the, the forest lady yeah, I don't remember her name. Voiced by a woman of color. Oh, really? Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. She's the, the boss. She's the boss so of that game. Like, She's so I, cool. want, I want her to be the be like every everything. So good. <laughs> she is my <laughs> goddess. I worship her. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's rad. She's so rad. So yeah, I mean, and that's I mean that just kind of comes around to sort of the the problems that are still endemic to you know, high fantasy at large. Yeah, high today. fantasy and video games at large, yeah. And video like, games, honestly, I, I do see, like, a forward momentum, which I'm really excited about. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. 
Definitely. But I mean, there's there's still relics, you know, relics of 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 sort of what worked for them, even if it. Well, and, and we've talked about this before, but there is that stupid idea, you know, it comes up with um, queerness as well as um, non-white uh, characters. The idea that's like, well, but it wouldn't be authentic. Ugh. And it's like, to what? To your imaginary Yeah, and the world? game's not like, authentic anyway. There's not, like, there's, there's, there's orcs that have, like, weird Yeah, we've already changed a lot. Authentic. Yeah, like, Bruce shouldn't be able to speak the common tongue, so deal with it. Like, <laughs> let's 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 expand things. Let's have new ideas. Let's have new stories. Like, yeah, I was actually just having a conversation with Will about that uh, earlier this evening, but it's just nonsense. And and it's I mean the it's being chipped away at, but it's slow going, mm-hmm. and it. It really sucks. Actually, I was so uh, in preparation for this when uh, we had first started talking about um, maybe focusing on Tolkien and sort of works inspired by Tolkien. Um, I was looking up sort of what you know what works were um, had sort of come out of the tradition of Tolkien, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and like one of the very very first writers, fantasy writers, to write in the style of Tolkien, to be inspired by Tolkien, was Ursula Le Guin. Like, yeah. she's mm-hmm. so... Oh, oh, yeah. I met her. She's probably the smartest, <laughs> smartest like, human alive. Oh, she's so smart, too. Oh. Yeah. I, it's funny. I, I don't... I feel bad. I didn't know who she was when I met her. Uh, oh, no. It was... I, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't I have recognized her. I mean, I read her... Uh, one of her books when I was, I don't know, probably 13 or 14... I hadn't at the time read any of her work. I was like 15 and Mm -hmm. I um, was at uh, Oricon, uh, Portland's very old sci-fi and fantasy (laughs) convention um, with my, my dad, my birth dad. And he's um he's been going he like he had gone to oricon when he was like 14 so like he you know he oh, would, wow. this was like old school con for him um and he was actually going as a panelist and um we were walking around and uh we c- came upon this older lady and he was like <laughs> oh my gosh ashley and like they knew each other which is crazy um uh-huh. and he was like oh gosh you gotta m- meet her like th- you know and i was like i was polite um but like i didn't know yeah <laughs> so I, it's like and now i'm like oh what ah oh, i can't believe i didn't appreciate <laughs> that at the time but um but she was very sweet yeah i think my the first book that I read of hers, I think it was called Gifts, G I F T S, mm. um, and I was just like blown over by that book. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know, as as a little gay growing up, I definitely felt like like sent some notes of that in there, like the sort of like loneliness and the like being different and like feeling you know left out. Uh-huh. Um, so I appreciate her for that. She's a lovely person and and a, and a gift to the world. Indeed. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, you know, women and, you know, people of color have been participating in this tradition for a very long time, but it's just not recognized in the way that yeah. it should be. And, 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 you know, to the point where, like, folks are dissuaded from participating because they feel like it's not their place. Like, they don't, like, they don't belong. And that's yeah, why and I, I say, let's chuck that part of Tolkien in the bin. Like, we don't need that. <laughs> we don't need that yeah. xenophobia. I'm, I don't know. I'm just imagining. So I, I run in sort of like literary, poetry, journal circles, that sort of thing. And now I'm just like, there should be a journal that just like accepts this like straight up queer Tolkien fan fiction or something. And makes it just like, <laughs> ele- just because like. All it takes is one editor to elevate something to the to the height of of literature. Like, it's not uh-huh. like this hard fast rule that like it can't be there. It's like no, it just get somebody. You just have to give somebody a chance. Just decide it belongs. Just do. This is arbitrary. <laughs> yeah. I uh, before we go would like to um, just drop in a little recommendation for a podcast. I'm always listening to new podcasts. Um, this was actually advertised in a Jumbotron on the last episode <laughs> of uh, The Adventure Zone. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that but... was such a good episode. 
Wasn't it? <laughs> oh my god, Cardall is a boss. I can't believe there's only uh, one more episode of the commitment arc. I wanted to keep going. I know, I'm going to miss these kids. Remy's my little boy. Um, but, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they advertised for um, a podcast called Brute Force. Uh-huh. It is another, like, uh, real play uh, RPG podcast, and it is a blast. I actually have n- never really checked out any other ones, um, a-, a couple here and there, and I just couldn't quite get into them the way that I like the Adventure Zone. But this one is real close. Like, I'm really, really liking it. The reason I decided to check it out is because of the hook is... Um, the player characters, the heroes, are all monstrous beings. That's why it's called Brute Force. They're all monsters. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun and cool. Like, the characters are all really likable and funny, and it's it's got this interesting sort of um, built-in conflict of you know, the way that they are treated, um, being monsters. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really fun. It's really sweet and funny. I, I really, um, I'm, I'm actually (laughs) listening to it pretty rapidly because, (laughs) because I'm just really getting into it. So, um, if you're somebody who likes something like the Avenger Zone, I would definitely suggest checking out Brute Force. Uh, uh, Yeah, awesome. (laughs) Okay, so that's what I've got. Anything else you wanted to recommend? Uh, I think that I'm good. I just uh, wanted to say that uh, I'm sad that Commitment will be ending, but I don't know. So so far it has to my vote if they want to continue with it. But then it's like, what else are they going to come up with? They've got two more. Yeah, well, I'm really excited for Justin's, like, mystery, like Sherlock Holmes mystery Uh, type. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm... Yeah. Because I, um, I didn't think I would love, I honestly did not think I would love it because I didn't like the premise too much and I didn't know how Clint would do, but then he's totally sold me with all of his voices. He's Ugh. so good. He's funny. And then, oh my God. So my favorite character is, uh, oh God, the Thunder Goddess. Cardola. <laughs> She's <laughs> so terrible good. Terrible Bible. <laughs> yeah. No, Justin he steals, he can't help but steal the show all the time. He's too funny. Um, I love all three Scythe-like of them. Scythe-like Bible. His terrible Scythe-like Bible. Yeah, <laughs> nah, it's it's a great time. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, like, here's an endorsement that doesn't even need to be made because everybody knows already. Like, Adventure Zone is awesome. If you haven't listened to it before, um, starting with the beginning of this most recent arc is a great place to jump in. We're only, like, four episodes in. Um, it's, you know, a whole brand new thing, new story, new characters. So, like, if you want to get a taste for it, see how you like it. Hop on in there. It's it's a good time. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us. And like the video if you just like us. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. Also, feel free to ask us any questions or give us suggestions for what we can talk about in the future. Yeah, give us any feedback you got. Uh, if you want to ha- carry on a conversation about the topic, if you have anything you'd like to add, please do. We'd love to hear it. Uh, and thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember... No No guilty guilty pleasures. pleasures.